What's up guys? We're headed down to Eugene right now, uh, starting our day with some Jamba Juice and Starbucks. Oh yeah, we got the mini mics ripping. We're heading to Spencer's Butte. We're going to go for a hike. I'm excited. It's been probably two years since we did that last. Last I time we so. were here, we went and did that hike and then I think we went to the gem show, didn't we? No, I think we hit mountain glass like we're going to do today. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah, that's the plan. So after we hike, probably grab some lunch and then go to Mountain Glass, the biggest glass and tool supplier in Oregon for Boro stuff. And I haven't gone to Mountain Glass since before I started more seriously blowing glass. So I'm super excited to go see all the colors, all the tools, all the fun things. I remember all the frit. Dude, I want to look at all the frit. Yeah. Also, I got a hot tip from Frit Glass that he uses fine frit. And I've been using medium. So that means mm. I'm two gradients above. And he said that the fine is how he gets the clean melt in. So it's all that like makes sense. crispy smooth. So I was like, dude, I've even used large frit. So Dang. good to learn that. We'll be able to look through all the frit. I also saw that they have north star yellow frit which would be like it's like fumy frit that'll be dope so we're gonna check for that and then i want to show you all the graphite like molds that's what i'm excited if about. i remember right i think they have some where the mandrels there's a cutout for mandrels yeah so, so you, you can, can mold it dude this is gonna be dope come with oh, us i can't wait let's get it we made it to spencer's butte we're gonna go to the bathroom and start making our way up do a little fit check. What's up guys? We got the black beanie, very basic but comfy. The Ray-Ban glasses that I've been getting compliments on, so thank you. We got the Pop Pop bracelet. Shout out to Mama for that, as well as the crystal bracelet from her. Uh, we got the Banjo Glass B. We got the Ass Pizza Jacket 2022. Got my new Carhartts that I found thrifting that I was super happy about. And we got the Focus Tims. What about you, Mama? I got a jacket from Costco. <laughs> Very warm and comfy. And then I've got my Mama sweater underneath. And ambitiously, I have a cute crop top on underneath <laughs> just in case the sun comes out. Amazon leggings and white Tims. No glass stuff today, though. I didn't think about it. Yeah, that's all right. We are out here, the beautiful Pacific Northwest, just south of Eugene. It's so beautiful. You can see all these different people's properties. Some people have like giant properties, some people don't. It's a hike. It's a lot of elevation gain. We're over halfway there. We're getting it. We made it to the top. The view is incredible. I'm thankful that it's so bright and clear out. And I noticed there's a lake off in the distance over there. And if it's Fern Ridge, I think I caught a three to three and a half pound bass there approximately 14 years ago. Anyway, I remember fish, okay? Not always people's names, but I remember what pound of fish I caught. It's one thing my son knows me for. He knows me as the guy who can tell him like if it's a three pounder or a five pounder. Anyway, it was a beautiful hike. The weather feels amazing. There's cute chip monkeys all chipping around. We just accomplished going two miles uphill to get to the top of Spencer's Butte. I don't remember it being as hilly as it was. <laughs> I think I blocked that part out. <laughs> but this time, Ben helped push me. I pushed myself to do it faster, to not stop as much or stop for less periods of time. Kept the stops quick. We did keep the stops quick, just enough to catch my breath and keep going. But it felt, mean to. it felt really good. It shows that I've improved through my fitness journey. Even if I'm not at the end of my journey, I would not have done this years ago and over a hundred pounds heavier, I would just would not have chose to do something like this for myself, for my body and for my mental health and to spend time with my partner who I love. Like 
a lot of things held me back from doing fun stuff like this. And even though it's challenging, it's very rewarding. I brought this new piece that I made up to the top of the mountain. I'm really trying to refine the quality on stuff. For a while, I've got by with my artistry, my visionary pieces being the anchor to my work. But more recently, I've recognized that it's more important to focus on the quality than ever. So at this point in my career, I'm really trying to focus on the quality and get everything, the proper thickness, the proper fit, and how I intend it to look. And this piece represents that, some white frit, opal on the back, and a good fitting joint that I worked hard on. Hope you guys take it. Heading downhill. It's easier coming downhill. There's a bunch of stone steps, so it's nice to go down instead of up. Out beyond us is south of Eugene. Pretty close is Creswell, where I got some homies with a shop. So what's up, homies with the shop? Anyway, let's head down. We got our number here at Cafe Yum. Original bowl, large, and then one with chicken for mama. It's going down. We gotta get some water though. Let's see if the microphone will pick up the water. Could you hear that? We are back on the road, headed to Mountain Glass next. We're 13 minutes away, and we'll show y'all when we get there. If you're ever looking for Mountain Glass, it's next to the place with the fucking dragon. The carts here at Mountain Glass have names. We got Freddy, the freeloader. Here we are, guys. It's mountain glass. These go hard. I'm shook by how large these are. Like these are so pretty. They'll get you. We found a leaf masher. Smash some little leaf tendies and stuff, or attachments, I guess. Whatever you want to be a leaf. I'm not seeing any more molded type stuff in this section, though. That's kind of what I'm looking for. At Mountain Glass, we got our hall put together. Got this piece of scallop tubing. It's the one that has texture on the inside. Got some various greens and purples and some more tubing to make straws out of, so that's going to be good. Mama, tell them about your haul. I got a bunch of tiny little four-ish millimeter rods out of the odd section that I'm going to turn into earrings and chains. And I'm super excited to have fun colors to play with. In the next clip, we find ourselves at the Glass Ranch in Eugene, Oregon home to many different glass artists that you probably follow. It's a great place. We had a lot of wonderful conversations with people. I originally came there years ago to collaborate and meet new artist friends. And since then I've started to interview people. So I'm having fun bringing you guys along to learn a little bit more about these wonderful people who work there. Yeah, we're here with Ebit and Glass. Yo, what up? How you guys doing? Very good. So what got you into making glass in the first place? Let's tell the people where you started. Uh, so I lived out in Massachusetts, uh, selling weed for a homie, and his friend owned a smoke shop. So I went down there, checked it out, and fresh Pyrex was outside blowing glass. Dude, I got out of my car, and my jaw just dropped. I'd, like, never seen that shit before. Damn. Thought it was just, like, a little mold you puffed into. Oh, sick. And he had a raffle for the piece. I ended up winning it, and I was, just, oh, yeah. I was obsessed. I was it like, sounds dude. like a good day. It was good. It was good. <laughs> I had never won anything in my life. Yeah, yeah. So how did you get into it after that? Did you have, like, any hurdles to jump over? Because some people, 
they can like get right in with a homie or some they got to wait till they can find the space or whatever what did that look like so with fresh i had to message him a little bit at first he was a little hesitant but he gave me he gave me a lesson helped me get a torch helped me get a kiln and got me a spot to blow glass and i started blowing glass to sully reynolds and tarlin and uh that was my first shop i moved into and stayed there for a long time until i moved out here to oregon sick sick when did that happen uh that was like 2018 or 19. i went to east coast Mel met maddie white and just took me under his wing and That's brought so uh, lived on his couch for like two years and worked so champs blue glass damn hell yeah dude That's good. So i really got got a good big up on that one yeah so how'd your work change once you moved out here it must have evolved to like the next level of complexity or whatever so i was just kind of making whatever i wanted to i didn't really know anything like sully was like you know what a wrapping rake is and i was i was just taking color striping it on tube and making these pipes sometimes i'd spiral it and i went yeah. through so much color and he's like oh you ever done a wrapping rake and i was like nah and he yeah. did a little spin trail used a little bit of color and raked it up and i was like bro you you let me use all that until you <laughs> said something like Wait. He just saved you. It's like Geico. It's like, this is how you save $1,000 on Color oh Bill God. each month. That's what's up. Yeah. So yeah. I went from doing that, moved out to Maddie's, and was doing production. So I was making, yeah. I never did one E's. Okay. Didn't really like doing one E's. That was yeah. my life. Okay. I was making tons of one E's all day long. Sometimes it was like 400 one E's in a week. 400. You know? Shout out YG 400. Nope. I've seen videos of you going like rock hunting. Is that something yes, you do? What's, you, what's the deal about that? Go, uh, crystal mining, rock hounding. We're always doing it. My, my brother Kenny's actually outside with a truckload. He just got some crystal phrase. A truckload, he yeah, says. <laughs> we're, we're out there just living life, trying to get on mountains. And I don't know. I'm from uh, Minas Gerais, Brazil. So we have a lot of crystals and gems where I come Ooh, from. That's a big source of the world's crystals, yeah, right? Like yeah. Brazil and some certain types of of uh gems uh like tourmaline topaz uh aquamarine things like that and uh, my uncle was actually a miner okay. and my buddy kenny took me mining for the first time like where i actually went out to mine so if mining to you is that kind of different than rock hounding like forgive me but like white people do because no, like no, 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 no. it's all the same it's thing. all the same it shit depends on what you're going for like, I, sometimes I, I, I. you're going for agates it's rock hounding yeah okay. you know you're not really digging sometimes you might dig them up but you're not really like so you're hitting veins you're hitting veins of gold like some I'd, I'd be getting that gold bro <laughs> i'd be trying to i got a little gram last summer i spent 10 days though roasting in the river to get one gram of gold 10 and days on a gram we were supposed to split it and he felt so bad he was like bro you just have it <laughs> <laughs> that's not even bitcoin man that's just dude, that's just gold a gram of gold do the math dude what is it okay 28 in an ounce <laughs> Rams like sixty bucks. So it's a, a twenty. <laughs> you know, you ain't making ten bucks. Ten a day. days. It's, it's rough. It's rough. Fuck yeah, dude. Appreciate the interview. Yeah, and, and it's like you—you never put like the same. Yeah, like, uh, Unity yeah. vibe that really like makes sick work. Like we we fueled on dabs. <laughs> we just work with good vibes and make fucking really dope free shit. Just keep free over there. Yeah. Like, Fuck yeah, dude. Appreciate you talking. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was cool to kind of see there's a lot of different stuff going on. And you can kind of tell when you would talk to them about who the influences were. It seemed that it was very specific to if people were coming through town or just kind of who they learned from. I mean, a lot of the German guys had a lot of scientific background because they learned mm. in more of a scientific kind of place. Shout out to Roar. Yeah, I mean, um, so you're talking about influence from other European glass blowers. Yeah, because it's not really like people like you commonly touring. I think there were some though, like some of them talked about Yushin coming through and things oh, like that, right? So I think it some people would come through at different points, and if some of those artists got the opportunities to kind of connect with them, then that helped influence their stuff. Yeah, it brushed off. Did you encounter Hashba Glass? That's the dude I follow. I don't know. I think he's in Spain. I don't know if that's where you traveled. Where did you travel? Uh, I went to a lot of places, but I, I don't think I encountered them. Um, I can't remember. I met a bunch of people in Barcelona because I was there during Spanibus. Ooh. And so it was kind of a, a lot of people were there at that time. Um, yeah. But let's see, I started in Ireland 
and then I went Amsterdam, Germany, Italy, Switzerland. Is Switzerland fire? Switzerland is fire. I went there for a day for fondue and a spa. It was fantastic. Is it clean? It was super clean. Ooh. Yeah. Did you encounter any rich people? You see a Rolex factory? I didn't see any Rolex factories. There were rich people, though. I can confirm that. Did you get fucked up at all spending weird money? Do you get kind of american by people? Mm, probably. <laughs> probably. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, not, shit, probably. Shit. Was it confusing, though? Because uh, you're going to a different country. Or I guess it's all the Europe. Yeah. Okay. I mean, That's well, no, I think... I think Ireland might be different. I can't remember. Ireland might be on the pound. But Shout out to St. Paddy's Day. That was recent. Green. Shout out green. Green dwarfs. Green dwarfs, exactly. <laughs> We're bringing it full circle, dude. Uh, that's Damn. what we do on the Ben Focus vlog, baby. <laughs> yeah. What did uh, you do in Ireland? You blue glass in Ireland? Yeah, so I was actually, it was supposed to be a layover. And then uh, two homies, uh, chilling and melted glass. Uh, Chillin actually hit me up. His name's Jack, and he was like, "Hey, man, like you should come through." And I was like, "Okay, fuck, I'm just not gonna get on my second plane." He didn't say it like that though. It, say it how he said it. I mean, <laughs> he typed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't want to even butcher that. I wish I could. I, no, I know, man. No, not gonna be me, unfortunately. Do you have any plans to travel any more recently or coming up? Yeah, I'm looking at going to Europe again. Um, we're just kind of trying to figure out the logistics of it. The gas conference is in Germany this year. Um, oh, I think it's like next month to May. At some point, or I guess that's two months. Does that Not have good. a lot of art, though? Because I thought the gas conference was people who scientific work, or no? I'm not super familiar with it, but it was kind of just a good excuse. Uh, one of my best friends uh, lives over there in Germany. Shout out, Scoops. And uh, so I try and go see him just like once a year kind of thing as we come to fish. And, yeah. Hell yeah. That's what's up, dude. Well, safe travels. Appreciate the interview. Thank you. Yo. Thank you all for tuning into this vlog. If you like, please leave a like, subscribe, and leave us a comment with what we should do next or what you'd like to see more of. We're planning on doing some more long-form content, so thank you for tuning into this stuff. Love y'all. Stay focused.